Hello, my name is Vilan Sukar, and this is another video covering the BIM framework. In this short video, we're going to cover the BIM lenses. The BIM lenses is the third dimension in the triaxial model or triaxial framework within the, the larger BIM framework. Uh, we've already covered the BIM stages and BIM fields in previous videos. I'll provide links at the end of uh, this one. So, what are uh, lenses? Lenses are layers of analysis. Uh, which we can apply to fields and stages. If you remember, fields is the expanse of knowledge within a domain. So we look at the players, the stakeholders, their deliverables, their requirements, and stages are the performance milestones. So what do lenses do? They reduce the complexity of discussing BIM. So if you're discussing BIM, typically there's lots of topics being discussed at the same time. So what we use lenses for is to reduce the complexity of these discussions by uh, focusing on a specific topic, and we'll discuss what that means in a second, and removing um, unnecessary detail. Another thing is lenses allow researchers, and here when we use the term researchers in all these videos, we don't really mean academic researchers. Uh, practitioners can be good researchers, they can be even better researchers. Uh, from uh, academic ones or the opposite may be true. So when we use researchers, please remember that we are discussing all types of researchers. So this is allow researchers to generate uh, knowledge views, so ways of organizing knowledge. So view is a, is a, is a certain organization of uh, knowledge items that either highlight observables or filter out um, uh, observables. So really, either we highlight observables that meet our research criteria, what we are trying to understand or trying to analyze or explain or test, or to filter out these uh, observables that we don't really, they are just uh, creating pollution in our uh, observation space. What does this mean? If uh, we look at uh, the triaxial framework and, you know, lenses uh, is the Z uh, or Z axes or within the framework. So either we use lenses to highlight a topic or activity or we use something called a filter to isolate a topic of activity. So what does that mean? Let's look at it from a different angle. So assume this is a, a field of observation, this uh, rectangle here, and we have all these observations in. It could be people, it could be data, it could be processes, it could be protocols, it could be anything. So anything that comes to mind, or if you uh, look at it at, at the physical space around you, it could be chairs, lights, it could be uh, walls, it could be anything. So all these are observables. What lenses do uh, are uh, they, they highlight a specific type of uh, ob observable and something we want to, to highlight. So, for example, here we want to highlight uh, observables with attribute value equal to A. So, we want to look at A. So, here all of the observables look similar. When we apply a lens that's looking for A, A is highlighted so we can notice it better. But you also can uh, apply a filter. So, a filter really does of the opposite we say okay i want a so please remove everything that is not a so so here we have the, the field of observation this is a, a field observation with a lens applied and this is with a filter applied uh, to uh, to isolate uh, anything that has a value not a and we can use these lenses and filters uh, not uh, just to isolate the uh, simple things, we can use it to, to do many, many things. So really, uh, there are three types, three main types of lenses and filters. So uh, all lenses and filters fall under these, these three uh, types. So these types are disciplinary lenses. So we are looking, um, we're using a disciplinary lens, meaning we are either uh, highlighting something by domain, by specialty, or filtering them by domain or by specialty. Another type is a scoping lens, so we are either highlighting or isolating according to a scope, a scale, a size, a level of detail. And the third type is conceptual um, lenses, which we use to highlight a specific uh, concept. And this is based on the BIM ontology, which can, I'm going to discuss in a second, and it will have its own video as well. So let's look at the first type of uh, lenses and filters, disciplinary. So these include uh, something like the discipline of data management, design management, change management, construction management, cost, facility, HR, you name it. There's lots and lots of these uh, disciplinary lenses and which uh, apply uh, to 
all types of disciplines uh, and specialties. So we're going to take an example of a data management lens and filter. So applying a data management lens, we look uh, here at this model, which uh, was covered in a previous video. Here we can see these types of objects, which are, you know, a window, a column, a door, and how they are used within a, a uh, building, which is actually a database, and how they persist, etc. So by using a lens applied to a project, so we're looking at the project and we're applying a data management lens, we can focus on the windows, uh, doors, and columns as data objects and their trip from being generated on their own to be placed within a building and how uh, they still persist within the database. So this is a data management lens. If we use, for example, another uh, type of lens, a, a data management filter, um, this looks at also at data and, uh, and file exchanges uh, between consultants and clients. And uh, this is just uses a, a specific language used by the BIM framework where things are represented as uh, cubes. Uh, um, if you remember from BIM stages, the way uh, things are represented. So here we're looking at the uh, consultant A, how, how they, they are exchanging um, Excel and text, CAD, PDF data, and uh, NavisWorks. While consultant B is exchanging different type, and, and consultant S, which is a structure engineer, again, and how the post planner is exchanging something else. So, so this is a way of looking at the exchange between uh, different stakeholders by focusing on a specific type of exchange. So we're not really here looking at an exchange of ideas. We're not looking at exchange of money. We're looking at exchange of data between these different stakeholders within a specific type of project. The second type of lens is the scoping lens. Scoping lens covers something like organization scale. I'll give you an example of that in a second. Or organization size. So for example, the size of a company by number of employees, uh, as an example, or by project size of uh, by meter squared, feet squared, or by value. Project part, whether we're focusing on a, a project part A, a zone, or building, etc., or by project phase, are we focusing on design, construction, operation, or within construction, are we focusing on, you know, preparing the site or on commissioning, a level of detail or level of definition or, or, or level of development. So, here we're using the scoping lens to focus on something very specific. Uh, we, we are looking at something which is broad. We're looking at something highly detailed. So we can use the scoping lenses in order to focus on something based on their level of detail. So organizational scale is an example of the scoping lens. This model here, uh, the organization scale model, uh, clarifies that uh, a, if you look at uh, around us, we can organize uh, um, information according to organizational scale from a market to an individual. So for example, we can look at uh, the performance of an organization or we can look at the uh, competency of an individual or we can look at the diffusion of them within a market or we can look at a collaboration between disciplines, etc. So so this uh, organizational scale here, well, here uh, the MIM framework defines uh, 12 of these um, scales it helps us a lot in in focusing on a specific um, size or specific uh, or scale of an organization in order to do our studies in order to understand This organizational uh, scale uh, and organizational model uh, depicts uh, the whole market as made of uh, different um, subdivisions. So, for example, we can look at the global market, and then, then it's subdivided into you know smaller market like countries. Then it's subdivided into industries and sectors and specialties. At the bottom here, we've got also organization members or individuals. We've got groups. So we can use uh, this scoping lens, uh, which is uh, uh, organizational scale in order to focus on a specific scale when we're doing our studies, investigating collaboration, we're looking at performance. So uh, this is a good example of 
uh, a scoping lens. Another type of lens is conceptual. And now to understand uh, really what is a conceptual lens or conceptual filter is, we have to, to understand the BIM ontology. Um, if, if the video is available, please have a look at it. If you haven't seen the video yet or it's not available, uh, bear with me a second. I'm going to explain this briefly. So type lenses and uh, this three lenses and filters about the conceptual lenses, which I actually focus on a specific concept. Uh, for example, where a specific concept would be a software or an incentive or an activity or an event or a relationship between concepts or what's the relationship between uh, software and uh, a, you know a certain type of deliverable or by attribute of each concept. For example, an attribute could be a cost. So, for example, uh, we can use this type of lens to focus on the cost of software or the cost of hardware. Um, by knowledge set, this is a bit uh, more of an evolved uh, topic and we'll have to cover it in a separate video. So, just uh, to quickly show you the BIM ontology um, here. So, BIM ontology is made of, you know, these uh, uh, what's called knowledge objects, concepts, relations, attributes, and knowledge sets. And uh, if you're focusing on concepts, uh, here we have all these types of concepts. We can focus on activities or we can focus on role. Lenses and filters can be used individually, like one lens applied to a field of observation or one filter, or they can be used together and can accumulate them. Uh, one lens can add to the one before it or can subtract from it. Uh, to give you a visual example first, uh, so we've got uh, these stages and fields and we've got uh, this uh, lens here. We can add another one, we can add uh, another one, another one, until we, we, we really can zoom in to exactly the topic that we want to focus on, we want, we want to investigate or we want uh, to test. So we have this huge field of, uh, of um, observation and we want to focus on something very, very specific and on in this video by just giving you a couple of examples of how to apply these lenses together. So for example, we can use lenses and filters to focus on collaboration practices, okay, which is something within the um, collaboration uh, management, if you want, or it's a concept uh, between designers and detailers. Uh, within structural engineering firms in Australia and New Zealand. And so Australia and New Zealand here is a scoping lens. Uh, structural engineering firm is a, a couple of lenses applied together. So we are looking at structural engineering as a discipline and firm as a scale. And designers and detailers, uh, we are looking at roles, collaboration practices, we are looking at types of activities. So really, here we have a, comp a compilation of uh, lenses and filters in order to allow us to study practices uh, within specific about uh, but between the specific roles within a specific type of uh, firm uh, at a specific location another example would be if we are trying to uh, uh, look at or investigate or study or improve uh, we look at uh, the non, non let's say we're looking at non financial incentives non monetary incentives if you want to reduce change resistance in construction companies which are larger than 500 employees and three locations so here we are using all these types and lenses together in order to make a very uh, uh, focused analysis of construction companies of a certain size and we're looking at specific uh, uh, concept which is within the, the, the discipline of change management and we're looking at incentives and in, within incentives we're looking at non-financial incentives so this video clarifies uh, how BIM lenses uh, are used. It, it is used in order to understand everything else. So rather than looking at BIM as one big topic, uh, we can use lenses in order to focus on a specific discipline or relationship between disciplines or to focus on a specific size or scale or to focus on a specific concept like an activity uh, or role, etc. So BIM lenses are very, very powerful and it is used throughout the BIM framework and all the tools that are derived from the BIM framework. Thank you and this was the end of the BIM lenses uh, video. Uh, if you haven't yet watched the previous videos, please watch the, uh, the other videos available on the BIM framework uh, channel and remember to subscribe uh, to the channel to receive notifications of the latest video. Thank you for attending.